What's up, everybody, and welcome to History Lessons. I am joined by none other than Sean Boog. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Absolutely, man. What's going on with you? Oh, man, just here to give you your flowers. You've been in the game for well over, I would say, 20 years. So I uh, just want to thank you and go over your discography and what you currently got going on in 2023. Yeah. Sounds good. Now I feel old, but I, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt time flies. Yeah, uh, let's go back in history a little bit and tell everybody where you were born and raised. Uh, born in, Well, born in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, I lived there for a few years, but then moved. I, I lived I lived in... I lived the biggest portions of my life in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, and then we moved out here to North Carolina in 96. So, I mean, I've been out here for, you know, more than half my life. So I, I, I read that in C, that's pretty much. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, talk about a little bit of day in the life of Sean Boog uh, before music growing up in NC. Uh, I, I drank a lot <laughs> since, a, since a young teenager. Um, I was, you know, I, I grew up in a single parent household, so we had a lot of free time. My mom worked nights. So uh, we used to do a lot of kicking it at my apartment. That's got at our apartment. That's the type of stuff we did for fun. We would drink, listen to music, um, get into dumb shit. You know what I mean? Um, right. Other than that, just school and, you know, re regular, regular shit, you know? Right. Uh, before you got into music, what were some of your musical influences? Uh, who, I should say, were some of your musical influences? Um, Huge hip hop head since I was young, um, since I was about 10, 11, since I could understand it. Um, so I always go Hit Squad, um, huge, huge influence, EPMD, um, Red Man. Um, but I mean, run down the list. Like as, as, as I got into my teen years, huge boot camp head, like huge boot camp head. Um, but everybody from Quick, Cube, um, I mean, you run down, you run down the list. Um, NWA, just all different types of stuff. You know what I mean? We we always listened to everything. You know what I mean? It wasn't always just like a coast and th these different things. Because I mean, when I was when I was like 12 to 16, we were living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I picked up a lot of West Coast music at that time. Right. Um, so I mean, we you know we picked up uh, just all kinds of stuff. So I don't know. You can write it down the line. It's a long list. It's a long right. list. Right. Yep. Uh, so personally, how did you get into music? Um, some MCs would say, you know, uh, maybe a graffiti artist. Maybe they started out as DJ. And for Sean Boog, how did you get into hip hop? Uh, freestyling, just with friends. Um, just I can remember when I first started freestyling and, and just just rapping at parties is what we used to do. Um, and in Albuquerque and our crew, we had like a pretty we didn't have like a big group. We had a pretty decent sized crew, but we were the only like hip hop heads in Albuquerque at the time. Um, you, that just wasn't a big influence out there. Um, so we used to, we used to have parties. We would just battle that type of thing. Never really took it serious. Moved out to North Carolina, uh, met, met a, met a friend of mine who I haven't spoke to a few years, but we were, we were friends for many years named Kofi. Um, he goes by, he used to go by the name of impact. Uh, he was on away team's first album on a song called caution. Uh, I met him in high school and we formed a group called the verbal assaulters, which is pretty timely for being like 96, 97. <laughs> Right. You know what I mean, my name was the Lost Disciple, big Wu Tang <laughs> fan. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so we just did that. We made tapes, like pause tapes, and 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 rapped on karaoke machines and things like that. Um, and met the league, got hooked up with the league through Cesar Comanche. I met him through my homeboy named DJ Paradigm. Um, I don't remember how they linked, but they linked us, and that's kind of everything. Kind of went from there. Right. Before getting with the Justice League, uh, did any of that? Uh, music materialize as far as um you know a cd nothing no no well i i, I have some tapes but no one will ever hear those tapes. <laughs> right <laughs> you're right 96 97 ish uh, what was the music scene like uh as far as north carolina goes north carolina i wasn't out on like the scene at the time i didn't really get on the like the, lo the local scene until about 2000 um, I was just in high school and we were just rapping. So like, I wasn't really out there. You know what I mean? Um, what I do know is like, there was a, there was a, there was a, there's a crew out of Durham. Um, oh my God, I'm about to drop the name cause I'm just not thinking, but, uh, DJ Bro Rab, DJ Skaz, um, uh, Mike Nice, they, they used to have a radio show. They were in Blaze Magazine. I remember we first moved out here. They're, they were on the, um, Duke, was it Duke? No, they were on the, God, which radio station was it? Was it Central or Duke? I can't remember. But um, they used to have a, a, a thing called Straight from the Crates. 
So that was my first introduction to the local scene. And that was like in 96. We first moved out here. Uh, first thing, I have an older brother. So the first thing we did was try to find, you know, where, where, where do you like, where do you go to listen? That's who we got on to. So I, I looked up to them for the longest. And then when I got on the scene, I ended up meeting them. And, and Bro Rab and Skaz actually mixed one of my, uh, did a mixtape for me called Great Adventures of Sean Wayne. So it ended up working out. But that would be my first, first introduction into the North Carolina scene. So uh, did you mm-hmm. shop any demos earlier on? Absolutely not. No, Mm-mm. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't take rap seriously until I met Comanche. I didn't know. Like it was just some. I just rap for the fun. You know what I mean? I never even thought about taking it somewhere. You know what I mean? Or trying to try. I never even thought about trying to record. Like not like that. Like he was the first person I saw with a computer, with a real mic, with like you know that type of shit. He just. I had no. You know what I mean? Never would have thought about it. So right. no. Mm-mm. After meeting Comanche, where did that uh, leave you? Where, where, what direction did you go uh, after meeting Comanche? Uh, we went. He so at the time that I met him, he was just building his studio in his house. Um, so I met him, and then I met Knight um, right after that, and we just started recording. Um, in fact, uh, we kicked off. We kicked off Comanche Studio, Missy Ann. Um, a lot of, I mean, the, the the listening was recorded there. Most of it. Um, and I remember we broke in and we broke in his computer. We recorded the first song, me and Knight, and it was over like standard. It wasn't like, he didn't even sample nothing. We were just trying to make sure everything worked. So it was sounds that was in Fruity Loops, like that type of thing. And then we ended up doing actual songs, but we broke his studio in. So that's, that's kind of where it went from there. And then from there, just started recording and it just, you know, just kept going. So you get with Ninth uh, mm-hmm. at that point uh, was you say the listening was already out? No, no, no. That was like two thousand. So that was before Little Brother was even a group. That was before the Justice League existed. Um, that's when I got. That's when I joined the Justice League. Um, so nobody had anything out at the time, and it was kind of around that time where everything started materializing. So like I know Comanche had an album out called Wooden Nickels, but that was the only thing, um, and then his spot became the spot where every, I mean, we used to spend, I mean, it'd be, it'd be anywhere from four to 12 of us in there till five in the morning on a daily basis, like every day, every, every day. And then that's how, you know, we, that's how the away team formed me in crisis. And we just kind of came together. People were like, y'all need to work together. Da, 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 da. Little brother came together. It just, it just all came from there. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, did you have plans on just being a solo artist uh, before getting with crisis? Yeah, I was a solo artist. I didn't, you know, I didn't think about none of that. Um, at the time, I went by Def Con, which I hate that name too. You know, Sean Boog was given to me. Um, so no, I, I didn't. Again, I, this was all just nothing was planned. I was just going. You know what I mean? So right. Yeah. So earlier on, what kind of discussions did you and Crisis have as far as the direction uh, you wanted the a white team to go? all these answers are going to be similar. There really wasn't a direction. We just, we just got in there and recorded. Um, we did, I'm trying to remember the songs. Like we did, we did let off the round. Um, what were the first, we, we recorded like three songs, a joint called on and on, which was on the justice league mixtape and maybe like one or two others. And then it, and then that's when everybody was just like, y- y'all sound like that. You guys need to do the group thing. And, and, and just kind of went from there. And even then we didn't like, we didn't try to, we didn't, we just did the music we enjoyed. You know what I mean? That's all we did. So it wasn't so much like, this is what we're going to do. We just did, you know? Right. Uh, what was your first appearances on that NC State of Mind mixtape? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yep. What kind of reaction do you remember getting after that uh, hit the streets? Uh, so it's funny because at the time, we, I don't think we, well, I'll, I'll speak for myself, but I mean, I'm, I can, I'm pretty much sure everybody kind of had an under, same understanding. But at the time, we don't we didn't know how big that was. Um, I talked to Andreas Hale, who used to run hip hop site, um, and and you know wrote for all kinds of publications. Just you know, a, pretty much a legend in the writing game. But um, he he I talked to him years and years later, and he's like, man, we were moving those mixtapes like, and I we had no I didn't know I had no idea. Um, so the reaction was, it was dope. Like we got, you know, it got us on the map. It got us performing, doing shows. Um, we became a big thing in the, in the North Carolina local scene. Um, and then we started moving out. Um, but the, 
it's hard for me to like it didn't it didn't really feel any kind of way again everything was just moving i was just i was like 20 years old 21 i was just you know what i mean just just living like really honestly it didn't didn't notice the impact none of that all right how did you guys land over at six hole records so the six hole deal was um sig did uh i'm drop i'm dropping i can't remember um his name good dude real good dude but uh he he wanted to sign ninth and and basically they brought it in where we did the package which is why it came out as a triple album so it was a way team legacy and the ninth album um and we kind of he kind of signed us as like not a group but he signed us as individual acts to put out that project basically okay and then at, and at the time big doe i think was big doe was handling all the business in and he set it all up you know right uh you know? what do you remember most about that creative process as far as your uh, debut album the national anthem fun i mean we just had fun man we had so much fun so like at the time in the justice league crew me specifically me somewhat crisis we were we were the drinkers and smokers so like we were like the that's kind of why we were the name the away team because we were kind of our own little thing where everybody else didn't you know what i mean didn't kind of get down like that so we just had a blast doing that man we didn't we didn't like we had it just fun like it was just it was just we spent nights in the studio you know what i mean we just that's all we did. That that was it. Like it, we, you'd get off work and you'd just go straight to the, you know what I'm saying, um, and record. And then you take breaks, go to parties, or take breaks and, you know, whatever. But just a good time, all around fun. Probably probably the most fun I'd had. Yeah. Right. You talked earlier about being uh, heavily influenced by the bootcamp clique. What was it like working with artists like Smith and Wesson, as well as uh, little brother Joe Scudder, Sean Don? Uh, Smith and Wesson was amazing, man. Like, so the boot camp came down, um, pretty much everybody. Um, I lived with Sean P, Smith and Wesson, Drew Ha. Um, is that it? Yeah, I think that was it. But anyway, they all came down and we did, we knocked all that out at Missy Ann as well. Um, Smith and Wesson was a dream come true. I always tell people, it's like, people are like, well, what's the dream art? Cause to me, the shining is top five album of all time. That's how I feel about right. it. It's so cohesive, just, I've never, you know what I mean? Anyway, but, um, so that was a dream come true. So when people ask me, who do you want to work with? I'm like, I pretty much worked with everybody I want. Like, that was the peak to me, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a blast, man. It was a, the good dudes. Um, Steel held us down one time in New York, me and Crisis. Just good dudes, man. It was, it was a good time. What do you remember most about that reception for your debut album? Uh, it was great. We got a, we got a, we had a full page right up in the source. Um, mm. At that time, North Carolina didn't have that. We were the, we were in the mic check section of the source. So to me, that was like that blew me away. I mean, they flew us to New York to do the photo shoot. Like, you know, that was just mind boggling to me. It was, so it was huge. Um, the reaction was mixed. Some people, you know, some people. I, I, I had to go to a path where not everybody fucked with me as a rapper, right? So I kind of had people that were like. Ah, Boogs Whack. Then you have people that, you know, that fucked with me. So it was mixed as far as for me. Um, but I ain't taking any kind of way. I just, I, I enjoy making the music, you know. So um, I just enjoyed the ride. And I, I got good and bad. But I mean, overall, I think people enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Right. I believe in 2006, uh, you guys were on the Justice League Soldiers of Fortune album. Uh, was that just a couple cuts on that? Yeah. So that was, that wasn't actually the Justice League. That was Hall of Justice. Oh, that, was a, that was a label that that dope big dope built outside of outside of the justice league so it was like not outside you know what i mean it was like some artists from the justice league and then plus like joe scudder who wasn't technically justice league but you know what i mean he was or whatever um um and i think josie mo became part of it but yeah soldiers of fortune um was a compilation album of the label uh we had grind season on there i was on a posse cut called tour duty was that on there? I think that was on there. And I, it might have been like one of the joint. I think it was a joint or two on there. I think it was on the joint with Sean Don too. Right. Was it a hard transition going from Six Hole Records to another label? Nah. Uh -uh. I mean, because realistically, everything was all in-house. Um, the, the the Six Hole change, well, it, was, it was just one album. It wasn't it wasn't like any kind of switch over. You know what I mean? No thing like that. So it was just kind of in. Um, so um, nah, no. Mm -mm. Everything was in house, you know. We all we we handled everything as far as the business, as far as the relationship. It it, it, it never really, you know what I mean. One like right. jumping labels. Right. 